would be most relevantly affected by this intervention? Right, so the cell types that tend to accumulate mitochondrial mutations to the greatest abundance are the post-mitotic cell types, cell types that have become constitutively unable to divide. So that means things like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, neuro neurons, things like that. I think personally that skeletal muscle is probably the number one target because the mechanism by which mitochondrial mutations actually matter, actually cause, con cause a contribution to aging despite being present at low abundance is probably through an elaborate sequence of chemistry that goes on in the circulation in our bloodstream. So that means that all cells that are, that are um, problematic affect the whole body and therefore muscle is likely to matter more than anything else simply because we have so much of it. So in pure mass action terms, the large majority of our mutant mitochondrial DNA and our cells affected by mutant mitochondria are in skeletal muscle. So that's my feeling. Aubrey, what's your feeling about uh, you know, what Bruce Ames has been working on, uh, which interests me a lot, which is uh, the potential effect of lead folic acid mm -hmm. and carnitine? Right. Uh, I think I read recently because the cytochrome oxidase. Okay, so, so um, yeah, the, the, the real active ingredient in what Bruce Ames has been pursuing with Juvenon for some time now is acetyl L carnitine, which increases the rate of import of fatty acids into mitochondria and thereby increases their um, activity. And lipoic acid is what he's using now. He was originally using PBN as an antioxidant to, to, to address the side effect of. Of, of upregulating fatty acid import, which turned out to be free radical production. Okay, so um, yes, it's a very, very interesting approach, and it certainly does cause, superficially, rejuvenation of mitochondrial activity, and consequently, um, you know, rejuvenation of overall you know, tissue and, and organismal activity in, in rodents. That's terrific. Problem is, though, it, of course, does not have anything to do with mitochondrial mutations. It doesn't affect mitochondrial mutations at all. It just affects those aspects of mitochondrial function that are already encoded in the nucleus and are not actually um, affected by mitochondrial mutations. So we have a question we must ask here. We must ask whether it might actually be possible to improve lifespan or to have this be a, con a contributing factor to improving lifespan if lifespan is in any way limited by mitochondrial mutations. And I'm a little bit pessimistic. I think that actually it might be a bit like putting your pedal to the metal on a car that's about to fall apart. It might actually shorten the lifespan of the car. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a problem. Now, of course, Bruce understands that this is a potential um, interpretation of what's going on. He knows that it's not supposed to be a complete solution to mitochondrial aging. So he's interested in doing lifespan studies, and he's only been able to do one so far, and it was negative. It came out negative. Um, he's not happy with it as a conclusive result because a lot of the mice died of cancer, so his view is, well, maybe he um, only affected other aspects of aging and not cancer, and he wants to do more lifespan studies, but they're expensive. I definitely would love him to be funded to do more lifespan studies on Alcar and Lipo-8, for sure. It's a very interesting approach, but it's not really relevant to what I've just talked about. One more question on this section. What about the mitochondria of other species that are related to humans like well, seabirds for example have to fly like 500 or a thousand miles without stopping day and night to get to their next location right. are their mitochondria more efficient than ours okay so yes it's a very interesting situation um there seems to be a lot of difference in terms of the um the the, fun the, the cleanliness so to speak of mitochondrial function uh, but again that's not actually relevant to this question um, mitochondrial um, DNA of other species, all other vertebrates, encodes exactly the same 13 genes as human mitochondrial DNA. That's a very important thing. So if it's damaged, then it's going to have the same sort of effect on mitochondrial function as, as it happens in humans. Now, one thing we do know about birds is that their mitochondria seem to make free radicals at a lower rate, at a lower, um, just rate of production than um, than the mammalian mitochondria do. And that's a really interesting result. It may well have a lot to do with aging because it may affect the rate at which mitochondrial mutations happen, apart from anything else. But it may also have other effects on aging that don't have anything to do with mitochondrial mutations, like the creation of protein oxidation that contributes to accumulation of lipofusin in the lysosome, for example. So there's a lot of different mechanisms by which free radical production 
contributes to aging, and they're all going to be affected by making mitochondrial, mitochondria produce free radicals at a lower rate. But again, this is really nothing to do with which components of the free radical producing machinery actually are nuclear coded versus mitochondrially encoded. Thank you, Aubrey. Can we move